This morning on CBS 2 News, the search for Michael Vaughn continues. Why investigators are set to start digging through another backyard as soon as this morning. Plus, some weekend winter fun here in the Treasure Valley. A look at the events happening nearby. Plus, it's time for our favorite part of the week. Get ready to meet Anders, our CBS 2 Pet of the Week. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Happy Friday. A live look for you of downtown Boise. It is December 2nd, 2022. I'm Sarah Jacobson. And I'm Ashley Carter. And we were clearly all feeling the winter yeah, spirit this yeah. morning and the cooler weather. Yes. Yeah, the cooler weather is here now. Okay. Yesterday we were seeing temperatures under the upper 30s this in the morning. Now we're seeing temperatures dropping all the way down to the low 20s. We saw that cold front really hitting hard today and temperatures won't jump over 32 degrees throughout the day today. That's going to be our high of 32 to 33 degrees. And then this morning we'll see temperatures around 28 degrees at 6 a.m. They'll drop to 25 degrees around 7 o'clock and then at 8 o'clock we'll drop all the way down to 23 degrees. So chilly temperatures ahead of us today and we're seeing a, some light snowfall throughout the region right now. Just some spot snowfall across much of the region over in the mountains. They might see a li little bit more snowfall, but mostly dry conditions throughout the region right now. We aren't going to see very much precipitation today or tomorrow, but then Sunday morning is where we're going to start to see some more precipitation make its way in. We could see some snowfall not only in the mountains, but here in the Treasure Valley as well. We could see about a half inch of snow here in the Treasure Valley. So we're not done with that snow yet here and then taking a look at temperatures throughout the day today. We're going to see temperatures jump into the 30s around 12 o'clock today. 32 degrees will be the high 33 over in Emmett and 34 degrees in Nampa and Caldwell. 35 degrees going to be the high in Ontario and 33 over in Mountain Home and then up in the mountains 22 degrees in McCall. Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long and on this Friday morning. Looking nice and calm out there. Not too many cars out on the roads yet. Not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down. But stay with us as we go through the morning and we'll keep you updated. And of course, when you get in the car, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. And the I-184 back open this morning after some traffic trouble overnight. All eastbound lanes of I-184 blocked for around three and a half hours. Now, according to Idaho State Police, a driver going the wrong way in the eastbound lanes collided head on with another car. Both drivers were transported to a local hospital. Their conditions are unknown as of this morning. Well, police planning to continue digging for what they believe to be the remains of Michael Vaughn. This time in a different backyard, they'll be looking in the one next door after not finding anything in the one that they just spent a week digging up. Now, CBS 2's Michaela Elich, she has more of what we're now learning. You can't take one of our most precious citizens from us and ever expect us to stop. Fruitland Police Chief J.D. Huff refusing to give up. Police have been searching for now six-year-old Michael Vaughn, who disappeared from his home last year in July. Search efforts continued in this backyard of a home on Red Wing Street in Fruitland after receiving a credible tip that Michael's remains may be there. Idaho Mountain Search and Rescue, Mountain State's detection dogs deployed multiple certified human remains detection dogs on the property, all of them alerting to the presence of human remains. For over a week, dozers, dump trucks, and investigators flooded the home, but there was still no sign of the little boy. Although the remains of Michael Vaughn were not recovered, we strongly believe based on evidence that Michael was abducted and is deceased and that his remains were buried and later moved from the property. Police believe these four people were involved in the abduction of Michael. Sarah Wandra and Stacy Wandra live at the home that was searched. Police also saying Brandon Shirtliff and Adrian Lucian were likely there during the time of Michael's disappearance, but they believe the two are now in different states and are still looking for them. I strongly encourage Shirtliff and Lucian to contact the Fruitland Police Department detectives as the window of time for talking and cooperation is coming to a close. Police say there are others that likely know more information and encourage everyone to come forward. When we finally reach the conclusion of this investigation 
and I can assure you that we will. All of those who have knowledge of Michael's disappearance and have failed to report or hindered our investigation will be pursued. Now, if you know anything about what happened to Michael, call the Fruitland Police Department. Their number is on your screen. That's 208-452-3110. You can stay anonymous by calling Crime Stoppers. That's 208-343-COPS. We have both numbers right there for you on your screen. And Boise police looking for two missing teens, and they say they need your help. Take a look at your screen. 17-year-old Marcus was last seen near Curtis and Emerald just yesterday around 3.30 p.m. Marcus, he's considered endangered because he does not have certain medication that he needs. Now, he could be wearing white and blue sweatpants with a black hoodie. Keep your eyes out. And also missing, but unrelated, it's, this is 13-year-old Jalen. Now, she was seen last Sunday when she ran away from home near Five Mile in Florence Road. Officers and her family following several leads and are increasingly worried for her safety. Now, if you have any information about either of these teens, call Ada County Dispatch. That's 208-377-6790. Well, if you are looking for some fun events this holiday weekend, look no further. Here's a look ahead. The Boise Holiday Parade tomorrow at 10 a.m. The route begins between 8th and Jefferson. In Garden City, there's the Boise Christmas Show. It goes through Sunday, 11 to 7 at the fairgrounds. Tickets, $5 for adults, 4 for seniors, and kids under 12 are free. And Meridian's Winter Lights Parade is today. It starts at 7 p.m. in downtown Meridian. There's a trolley from 5 to 9 from the Albertsons parking lot on Fairview and Meridian Roads. And in Eagle, tomorrow's the Eagle Country Christmas. It's from 1 to 6, located at Heritage Park. For more information on these events and more, make sure to head to our website, IdahoNews.com. Well, before we get to weather, we have to share our pet of the week. Yeah, meet Anders. He's a two-year-old Siberian Husky German Shepherd blend. Oh, look at that tongue. Now, Anders arrived at the shelter as a stray, and he's ready for a new beginning. He's ready to be your new best friend. Now, he is loyal and loving, super sweet and gentle, and, of course, eager to learn. Now, if you want to meet Anders, you can schedule an appointment with the West Valley Humane Society. We have a link to do that on our website, IdahoNews.com. <laughs> Such pretty eyes. Yeah, I know. What a cutie. I love it. Hey, Vasily, you've been looking for a dog. Yeah, I'm looking <laughs> for a dog, but got to wait a little bit longer. Uh, Hopefully, Andrews gets picked up before then. I got a couple months before I'm going to go get a dog yeah, no. here. So. He, de he deserves a big yeah, backyard. Yeah, he deserves a big backyard <laughs> right now. I definitely don't have that with no. me. But if you do have a big backyard, you might want to stay indoors as well because temperatures today, very cold. We're not going to jump above freezing for much of the day today. Day. Temperatures this, this morning are going to stay below 30 degrees, 25 degrees expected at 9 a.m. That'll jump to around 29 degrees at 11 o'clock, and then we'll jump into the 30s around 1 o'clock. We'll see mostly sunny skies throughout the day, so we aren't going to see that wetness that we saw yesterday. 28 degrees out right now with a northwesterly wind of about 6 miles per hour. Now, we do have about a 6 degree wind chill dropping that feels like temperature down to 22 degrees this morning, so very chilly out. We're not going to see any kind of precipitation over the next two days, but then on Sunday, we're going to see this low pressure system make its way into the Pacific Northwest, and then we're going to see snowfall not only in the mountains, but possibly here in the Treasure Valley. Here's a look at the next couple of days. We're going to continue to see clouds throughout the day today, and then we'll start to see it clear up as we head into Saturday morning, but then by Saturday afternoon, we're going to see more clouds moving to the region, and as you can see here, some snowfall moving into the region as well. Taking a look at forecast highs throughout the day, we are going to be on that roller coaster region. We've been talking about 34 degrees that high today. That'll jump to 38 degrees on Saturday and then 39 degrees expected on Sunday. Then temperatures are going to start dropping off once again as we near that high on Sunday or the average high of 42 degrees. Now temperatures will start to drop as that storm system moves in. We'll have more cold Arctic air move into the region, dropping temperatures back down to the low 30s. Monday, we'll see temperatures around 34 degrees and then Tuesday, we'll see temperatures around 33 degrees. I can give you a look at the extended forecast here in just a few minutes, but definitely going to be cold over the next couple of days. Yes, some very chilly days ahead. Mm -hmm. So bundle up, grab your jacket, just yeah. anything to stay warm. Yeah, grab a jacket and also this morning yeah. be aware of yeah. any kind of icing on the roads due to that wetness yesterday. We could have some ice due to this low temperatures today, so be aware of that when you get out the door this morning.
definitely important to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Vasily. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI bring a team traffic all morning long. And let's take a live look out there this chilly Friday morning. Not too many cars out on the roads yet. Looking nice and calm, everything moving smoothly. As Vasily mentioned, just keep an eye out for water on the roads that have may have frozen over. Just give yourself some extra time. And when you get in the car, turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. CBS 2's Great Idaho Food Drive is sponsored by Les Schwab, TDS Fiber, Two Men in a Truck, and News Talk KBOI. Well, the holidays are almost here. That's why CBS 2 is working with local businesses to help local Idahoans struggling to afford food. Idaho, about 9% of Idahoans and our friends and neighbors are experiencing food insecurity. Take care of your rent and we're here to help with the food. But we really can't do that without the support of the community. And that's why we need you. You can help by donating to the Great Idaho Food Drive. It's running through December 9th. Every dollar goes to the Idaho Food Bank. They're also asking for non-perishable food items. Things like canned protein, fruits, vegetables, soups, stews, whole grains, pasta, rice, even cereal. You can drop off those donations at any Treasure Valley Les Schwab Tire Center or TDS Fiber, or you can come right here to the CBS studios in downtown Boise. You can also donate money through a link. We have that for you on IdahoNews.com. Straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, Congress narrowly avoiding a rail strike that could have cost billions of dollars. A look at the bill now set to be signed by the president. Plus, a major highway in Hawaii is under threat as lava flows inches closer. The damage shutting down the road may do just before the holidays. And it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. It was a hard one. 7% of people say it is never acceptable to do this on an airplane. The answer, asking someone to switch seats. All right, now for today's question. If you're average, you spend 34 hours over the course of your life doing this. All right, folks, what do you think it is? CBS2 Adventure Weather showing your local forecast across the Gem State over in Mountain Home. 34 degrees and mostly sunny skies today. That'll drop to 19 degrees overnight with some more clouds rolling in. And then tomorrow, 38 degrees and partly cloudy skies expected over in Mountain Home. Moving to Council, 28 degrees and partly cloudy skies today. That'll drop to 14 degrees overnight. And then tomorrow, 33 degrees and mostly sunny skies in Council. Thank you, Vasily. Well, Congress has avoided what President Biden says could have been a Christmas catastrophe. The Senate voting to pass a bill to avert a looming rail strike. Now the president is set to sign it as soon as it reaches his desk. Bradley Blackburn has more from New York. The joint resolution is passed. Thursday's big Senate vote prevented a rail strike that could have cost the U.S. billions of dollars a day just before the holidays. We're going to avoid the rail strike, keep the rails running, keep things moving. President Biden asked Congress to act after four out of 12 rail unions rejected a labor deal the White House helped broker back in September. But not everyone believes Congress should have intervened. The workers voted down and Biden says, here, now go force it down their throats and use federal law. I, I, I think that's a bad deal. This is going to be a bipartisan disaster. The deal gives rail workers a 24 percent raise and some bonuses over five years. But a separate measure on perhaps the biggest sticking point for the unions failed. Would have added seven days of paid sick leave. That proposal ended in a 52 to 43 vote in favor. It needed 60 votes to pass the Senate. It's unfortunate that this happened and uh, we're going to continue to fight the sick leave issue uh, outside of contract. The president has vowed to continue to fight for paid sick leave, not just for rail employees, but for all American workers. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News. According to the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, prior to this instance, Congress has intervened 18 times in railroad labor negotiations to avoid a strike since the passage of the Railway Labor Act nearly 100 years ago. And railroad Railroad workers are not the only Americans without paid sick days. More than 20% of U.S. workers are in that same position, according to government data. A growing number of states, counties, and cities have been mandating the benefit in the recent years, but the absence of a federal standard sets the U.S. apart 
for most industrialized nations. I think there's an ongoing conversation in this country about how to make sure that workers in this sector and in every sector uh, get the support that they need. Traditionally, the GOP has said mandatory paid leave would be too hard on businesses that cannot afford it. And the U.S. Supreme Court says it will take up the legal fight over President Biden's student loan forgiveness program, which offers up to $20,000 in relief for millions of Americans. A federal appeals court in Missouri had blocked the program after six Republican-led states filed a lawsuit accusing the White House of overstepping its authority. The high court's ruling may not come until early summer, which is also around the time the administration's latest pause on federal student loan payments is set to expire. To developing news this morning, volcanic flows on Hawaii's Big Island posing a threat to one of the island's main highways. Now, lava is creeping toward Saddle Road, which connects the cities of Kona and Hilo. Now, blockage of the road would pose some serious problems. A lot of my family is on the Puna side, and we have other family in Kona, and we use this road to see each other, especially with the holidays coming up, to hooey together and spend time. And so, you know, we're looking at having to go uh, several hours longer around the South Way or taking the North Road. Hawaii's governor is issuing an emergency proclamation allowing responders to arrive quickly or limit access as needed. Now, if the lava does cross the highway, the Hawaii National Guard can help plan for alternative and try to set up some bypass routes. And while that glowing lava attracting visitors, officials there are asking people to be mindful of native Hawaiians. Now, for many, Mauna Loa's eruption has a deep cultural significance. I wanted to come and pay my respects to our Tutu Pele. Um, which we lovingly call the goddess of the volcano. And this volcano flow that is going on and um, praying that the goddess will take care of what needs to be taken care of. Now, cultural practitioners, they want lava gawkers to not get in the way of those who are chanting, praying, or gathering in ceremonies amid the eruption. Yeah, I like that. It's a good, it's a good message. All right. Well, a little different here at home, of course. We are much cooler. Not looking like Hawaii at all. Uh, Not at all. As much as I would love some palm trees around me. It is chilly. We're in the middle of yeah. winter. We also started meteorological winter yeah. as of yesterday. yesterday. Yeah. So, yeah, we're feeling it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're definitely feeling it right now. Temperatures in the 20s. And we're going to stay in the 20s till about 11 o'clock today. Temperatures will jump up to 32 to 33 degrees today. And take a look at these temperatures all the way from the north near the Canadian border down into the Great Basin. Temperatures below average, 27 degrees in Missoula, 32 here in Boise, 26 in Idaho Falls, and then down in Salt Lake, 35 degrees there and 28 in Elko today. So some very cold temperatures around much of the western United States. Right now we're seeing a lot of cloud cover around the Treasure Valley. A few spots, snow showers here and there, but those remain very light. We're not going to see very much precipitation today. 28 degrees the temperature right now in Boise, 29 in Nampa, and 26 over in Mountain Home this morning. And then up in the mountains, 12 degrees over in McCall and 8 degrees in Stanley this morning. Now taking a look at temperatures over the next seven days, we'll see temperatures around 33 degrees today. And then we'll jump up to 38 degrees on Saturday and 39 degrees on Sunday. Sunday is where we could see some morning snow over in over in the Treasure Valley and in the mountains. And then we'll turn to cloudy skies at night. Then on Monday, we'll see temperatures drop back down to 34 degrees as more cold Arctic air moves into the region. 34 on Monday, 33 on Tuesday, and then 31 on Wednesday. Temperatures jumping all the way down to 29 degrees on Thursday and then moving over to the mountains. 21 degrees expected today. That'll jump up to 30 degrees and then 32 degrees on Sunday where we'll see some snow showers. Then temperatures will start to drop back down as we enter early next week. Mostly cloudy skies expected throughout much of next week. 30 degrees on Monday, 27 on Tuesday and Wednesday and 25 on Thursday and then multiple different days with single digit lows this week over in the mountains. Very chilly temperatures ahead. And as you mentioned, the big thing to remember this morning is with these chilly temperatures, mm. watching out for the freezing on roads. Yeah, any kind of freezing. We had that wetness yesterday that could cause some freezing today with those low temperatures. So be aware of that. Give yourself a little bit more time this morning and also create some space for the cars ahead of you just in case of anything going wrong. Definitely. Thank mm -hmm. you, Vasily. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And on this Friday morning, still looking nice and calm. As you can see, traffic moving freely. 
No traffic backups and not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down. As Vasily mentioned, take it a little slower and give yourself more time between, more space between you and the car in front of you. And when you get in your car, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. And how are you feeling about our nation's economy? 58% of voters say the U.S. is currently in a recession. A Scott Rasmussen National Survey finds a fifth of voters say it's not and the rest are unsure. A year ago, voters felt much more positive about the economy. 48% said our country was in a recession this time last year and 29% said it wasn't. Coming up on CBS2 News this morning, decking the halls may be a little more spendy this season. But what does that mean for your Christmas tree? Plus, making the holidays a little brighter for local kids in need. How you can be a part of Idaho's largest toy drive. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. Well, you're likely going to be paying more for gifts, gatherings, and even Christmas trees this holiday season thanks to inflation. Many tree vendors are trying to keep up, keep those increases minimal, but they too are paying more for just about everything that keeps their operations running. Labor has gone up because of inflation. The trucking has gone up just to load the trees. The actual tree prices on our end wholesale wise has gone up. The American Christmas Tree Association says consumers should expect to pay anywhere from 5 to 20 percent more this year for your Christmas tree. Idaho's largest toy drive is sponsored by Idaho Central Credit Union, Big O Tires and Bronco Motors. It's the holiday season, folks, and CBS2 and News Talk KBOI, we're teaming up for Idaho's largest toy drive. Now, all the toys donated during the drive, they go to the Marine Corps' Toys for Tots making sure every kid here in the Treasure Valley can have a present to open over the holiday season. Now, if you want to help, you can drop off a new unwrapped toy or a book at any of the white Toys for Tots boxes you see across the community or at our big collection spot that's in the Sportsman's Warehouse parking lot on Fairview in Meridian. It's across from the village at Meridian. And don't delay the toy drive. It ends Tuesday, December 6th. Well, despite increasing prices, Americans aren't sealing those wallets shut. Black Friday and Cyber Monday seeing record sales. Now, the group Giving Tuesday says Americans also set records in generosity this week. Now, back on Tuesday alone, Americans, they donated more than $3 billion to charitable causes. Now, Giving Tuesday, it began as a hashtag about 10 years ago before becoming an independent nonprofit in 2020 with a focus on fundraising worldwide. Cool stuff. Coming up on CBS2 News, the Orion spacecraft on its way back to Earth, the latest on the mission and their plan for re-entry. And here's a look at what's coming up tonight on CBS2 for your Friday night. Of course, after all your favorites, join us for CBS2 News at 10 o'clock. And don't forget about our question of the day. We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS2 News, the search for Michael Vaughn continues. Why investigators are now set to start digging through another backyard as soon as this morning. Plus, some weekend winter fun here in the Treasure Valley. A look ahead at the events happening nearby. Plus, it's time for our favorite part of the week. Get ready to meet Anders, our CBS2 Pet of the Week. CBS2 News This Morning starts now. Happy Friday, everybody. Today going to be much colder than it was yesterday. Temperatures staying in the 20s for much of the morning. 28 degrees expected around 6 a.m. That'll drop to 25 degrees around 7. We'll drop all the way down to 23 degrees at 8 a.m. Much chillier than yesterday when we were seeing temperatures at this time nearing the 30s. So very much warmer yesterday. Now we're seeing that cold Arctic air starting to set in. And we are still seeing a little bit of precipitation around the Treasure Valley. Just some light snowstorms, a few isolated snowstorms storms that will start to 
uh, slow down as we head into later this morning. Now the chances of precipitation throughout the day today are pretty minimal and on Saturday we'll see it pretty minimal as well. But on Sunday morning we are going to see another low pressure storm move into the region. That's going to bring not only rain but some snowfall here in the Treasure Valley. We could see a little bit of snowfall about a half inch of snow here in the Treasure Valley. Taking a look at temperatures we will jump up to 32 degrees today. 32 degrees will be the high in Boise, 33 in Emmett and 34 in Caldwell and Nampa. 33 going to be the high in Mountain Home and 35 over in Ontario. And then up in the mountains, 22 degrees will be the high in McCall. Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring a team traffic all morning long. And on this chilly start to your Friday, not seeing too many cars out there. Keep in mind, as Vasily mentioned, it's a cold morning. If there's any road, if there's any water on the roads, it might freeze up. So just keep that in mind and be extra safe on your drive this morning. And when you hop in the car, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Well, the I-184 back open this morning after some traffic trouble overnight. All eastbound lanes of I-184 blocked for around three and a half hours. According to Idaho State Police, a driver going the wrong way in the eastbound lanes collided head on with another car. Both drivers were transported to a local hospital. Their conditions are unknown this morning. And police are planning to continue digging for what they believe to be the remains of Michael Vaughn. Now this time they're looking in a different backyard. They'll be looking at the one next door after not finding anything in the one that they just spent the last week digging up. CBS 2's Michaela Elich, she has more of what we're now learning. You can't take one of our most precious citizens from us and ever expect us to stop. Fruitland Police Chief J.D. Huff refusing to give up. Police have been searching for now six-year-old Michael Vaughn, who disappeared from his home last year in July. Search efforts continued in this backyard of a home on Red Wing Street in Fruitland. After receiving a credible tip that Michael's remains may be there. Idaho Mountain Search and Rescue, Mountain State's detection dogs deployed multiple certified human remains detection dogs on the property. All of them alerting to the presence of human remains. For over a week, dozers, dump trucks and investigators flooded the home, but there was still no sign of the little boy. Although the remains of Michael Vaughn were not recovered, we strongly believe, based on evidence, that Michael was abducted and is deceased and that his remains were buried and later moved from the property. Police believe these four people were involved in the abduction of Michael. Sarah Wandra and Stacy Wandra live at the home that was searched. Police also saying Brandon Shirtliff and Adrian Lucian were likely there during the time of Michael's disappearance, but they believe the two are now in different states and are still looking for them. I strongly encourage Shirtliff and Lucian to contact the Fruitland Police Department detectives as the window of time for talking and cooperation is coming to a close. Police say there are others that likely know more information and encourage everyone to come forward. When we finally reach the conclusion of this investigation, and I can assure you that we will, all of those who have knowledge of Michael's disappearance and have failed to report or hindered our investigation will be pursued. And that was Michaela Elich reporting. Now, if you know anything about what happened to Michael, call the Fruitland Police Department. Their number is on your screen. You can stay anonymous by calling Crime Stoppers. That's the additional number. That's 208-343-COPS. Of course, you can call them at any time during the day. Well, Boise Police looking for two missing teens and they need your help. Take a look at your screen. This is 17-year-old Marcus. He was last seen near Curtis and Emerald on Wednesday around 3.30 p.m. Marcus is considered endangered because he doesn't have certain medication that he needs. He could be wearing white and blue sweatpants with a black hoodie. And also missing but unrelated is 17-year-old Jalen. Now she was last seen Sunday when she ran away from home near Five Mile and Florence Road. Officers and her family following several leads, they say they're increasingly worried for her safety. If you have any information about either of these teens, call the Ada County Dispatch. That's 208-377-6790. Well, switching gears, if you're looking for some fun holiday events this weekend, look no further. Here's a look ahead. The Boise Holiday Parade is tomorrow at 10 a.m. 
The route begins between 8th and Jefferson. And in Garden City, there's the Boise Christmas Show. It goes through Sunday, 11 to 7 at the fairgrounds. Tickets are just 5 bucks for adults, 4 for seniors, and kids under 12 are free. Meridian's Winter Lights Parade is today, starting at 7 p.m. in downtown Meridian. There's a trolley from 5 to 9 from the Albertsons parking lot on Fairview and Meridian Roads. And in Eagle, tomorrow's the Eagle Country Christmas. It's from 1 to 6, located at Heritage Park. For more information on these events and many more, make sure to head to our website, IdahoNews.com. Well, hey guys, before we get to weather, we have to share our pet of the week. Yeah, let's meet Anders. He's a two-year-old Siberian Husky and German Shepherd blend. Now, Anders, he arrived at the shelter as a stray, and he's ready to begin a new home. Get ready to meet your best friend, basically. He's loyal, loving, super sweet and gentle, and of course, very eager to learn. Now, if you want to meet Anders, you can schedule an appointment with West Valley Humane Society. We have a link to do that. Just head to IdahoNews.com. Oh, what a good boy. Anders I love that picture. A, I love uh, that picture of him with the, with the tennis ball. Where he's like, oh, it's, it's such a great picture. Anders <laughs> needs a best shot. friend. Oh, yeah. Anders oh. needs the best friend in a home. Yeah. Looks yeah. like a great dog. Oh, he really does. Mm -hmm. I love it. The little blue eyes. Yes. The prettiest blue eyes. A little <laughs> tonguing out of his mouth. Oh, we could go on and on about Anders. <laughs> but, yeah, no, definitely. Well, I guess if you're going to be walking out your pup this morning, uh, make sure you bundle them up mm -hmm. or getting the kiddos out the door. Yeah. It is much chillier than what we experienced yesterday. Yeah, we saw your dog a little bit ago wearing that <laughs> sweater. So if you do have one for your dog, make sure you're wearing one because it is definitely going to be chilly out in the mornings. Temperatures won't jump up to 30 degrees till about 1 o'clock today. Temperatures are going to stay in the 20s for much of the day today at 9 a.m. It'll be about 25 degrees. That'll jump up to 29 degrees around 11 o'clock. And as I said, we'll jump up to 30 degrees around 1 o'clock, leading to our high today of 32 degrees. Now, temperatures right now, Sitting in the 20s, around 28 degrees, we have a six mile an hour north or northwesterly wind right now. With that wind chill of about six degrees, dropping that feels like temperature down to 22 degrees. Now, we want to keep our eye on this low pressure system here, that low pressure system before starting to move east, and we're going to see this low pressure system make its way into the Pacific Northwest, causing some precipitation on Sunday and could cause some snow on Sunday morning here in the Treasure Valley. So we do have that storm headed our way. Over the next couple of days, we are going to see continued cloud cover. We will see a little bit lighter clouds throughout the day today, but we'll see some more clouds move in throughout the night. And then overnight, we will see a little bit more clearing on Sunday morning, but then we'll see some more clouds move into the region on Saturday afternoon. And then Sunday is where we can see some of that snowfall make its way into the region. 33 degrees expected as the high today. That'll jump up to 38 degrees on Saturday. And then 39 degrees expected on Sunday. But after that storm moves in, we are going to see more Arctic air move into the region. That's going to drop temperatures back down into the low 30s. 34 degrees expected on Monday and 33 degrees expected on Tuesday. I'll give you a look at the extended forecast here in just a few minutes. And as you head out the door this morning, you want to grab a coat and mm -hmm. drive safe. Yeah, drive safe out there. We want to be careful of any kind of freezing on the road. So be aware of that as you head out the door with these low temperatures and that wetness we experienced yesterday. Definitely. Thank you, Vasily. Mm -hmm. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring a team traffic all morning long. And still looking calm out there, starting to see some more cars out on the road. But as you can see, everything moving along smoothly, no backups, and not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down. So when you hop in the car, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. CBS 2's Great Idaho Food Drive is sponsored by Les Schwab, TDS Fiber, Two Men in a Truck, and News Talk KBOI. Well, the holidays are almost here, folks. That's why CBS2 is working with local businesses to help those struggling to afford food. Idaho, about 9% of Idahoans and our friends and neighbors are experiencing food insecurity. Take care of your rent and we're here to help with the food. But we really can't do that without the support of the community. You can help by donating to the Great Idaho Food Drive through December 9th. Everything donated goes to the Idaho Food Bank and local Idahoans. They need non-perishable food items, things like canned proteins, fruits and vegetables, whole grains, rice, and cereal. You can drop off those donations at any Treasure Valley Les Schwab Tire Center at TDS Fiber or right here at CBS2 Studios in downtown Boise. You can also donate money through a link. We have that on IdahoNews.com. 
All right, it's time for our question of the day, folks. That question is, of course, um, well, let me look it up really quick. We don't have it on our screens anymore, but oh yeah, no, it's about being average. It's about being average. If you're average, that yes. is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you're not, think about this. 34 <laughs> hours over the course of your life, you spend doing this. Do we need to read it again? <laughs> 34 hours of your life. Well, I know for guy. me, I was thinking maybe brushing your teeth. I hope that adds up. I don't want to sound unhealthy here. I hope that all adds up <laughs> together. <laughs> I've been trying to do a lot of math this morning. <laughs> yeah, no, 34 hours. Um, I'm thinking scraping ice off your car, but oh, that's, that's obviously because I grew up in the north yeah. and it's all I think about <laughs> when, when it gets cold outside. That's yeah. my guess. Maybe making coffee, not yeah. drinking it, but just making it, That's especially if you just put your little coffee pot in, press a button and yeah, yeah. no, and a you're done. Yeah. yeah, adds yeah. up over time. Kathy says putting up and taking down your Christmas that is decorations. That's a good guess, especially for this time of year. <laughs> yes. yes, I need to do that. Thank you, Kathy. All right, let's see what else. <laughs> Jeff says sneezing. Oh, another great guess. That's a yeah, I can't All sneeze. those short period of time things add up over time. So <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's a great guess. Ashley said this one earlier. Marilyn saying tying your shoes. Another great guess. Yeah. Okay, guys. Yeah, no, I'm liking it. Little, I got some good ideas this morning. Little incremental things that add up over yeah. your lifetime. We're going to have to do some more math on the desk this <laughs> I know. morning. Give me my calculator. <laughs> All right. Well, if you think you know the answer, of course, just head to our Facebook page or our Twitter. Check out our question of the day question. And we'll read some more of your guesses throughout the morning and reveal the answer right before CBS This Morning. Still to come on CBS 2 News, a warning for parents after a 10-month-old overdoses at a popular park in California. The change one father says he wants to see. CBS 2 Adventure Weather showing you local forecast across the Gem State and Emmett. 33 degrees and mostly sunny skies today. That'll drop to 20 degrees overnight as some more clouds roll in. And then tomorrow, 35 degrees and partly cloudy skies expected over in Emmett. Moving over to Idaho City, 28 degrees and partly cloudy skies today. That'll drop to 6 degrees overnight. And then tomorrow, 30 degrees and partly cloudy skies expected in Idaho City. Thank you, Vasily. Well, down in California, a 10-month-old boy ingesting fentanyl at a popular park in San Francisco. Now the father is warning other parents and thanking first responders for their quick response. Luz Pena has the story. It's the frightening phone call Ivan Markovic is still playing in his mind. His 10-month-old son was turning blue and struggling to breathe. Minutes earlier, he was playing in the grass with his twin brother at Moscone Park in San Francisco. When I first arrived, he was actually laying motionless on the ground in the park. So he was on the grass, on his back, um, you know, they were uh, pumping air. San Francisco firefighters and paramedics arrived on scene within two minutes of the nanny calling 911. Ivan felt helpless, hoping his son would survive. You thought you were gonna lose him? Yeah, of course. I, I mean, uh, I, I think it was only once uh, they put him in the emergency vehicle and transferred him that you felt like, oh, okay, there's a possibility for treatment. But until that point when he's lying there motionless, you're, you're, you don't know what to do. And you don't know if that's it. Medical records the family provided to ABC7 News points to an accidental fentanyl overdose, a diagnosis that never crossed their mind. They told me, you know, after the fact that they had used Narcan, how does a 10-month-old get into opioids at a playground and a park. Right around that bench is where the incident happened. It's still unclear how Senna ingested fentanyl, but now his family is speaking to alert other parents to be on high alert of any foil or powder in the grass. We contacted the mayor's office and she was unavailable for an interview. Supervisor Matt Dorsey called this incident another wake-up call for the city. How do we avoid this from happening again? I think I think it has to start with criminal justice and I think we have to go after the drug dealers. We have to incentivize people who are active in their addictions to get out of their addictions. Baby Senna was discharged after six hours in the hospital. Today the family is thanking first responders for saving his life. And no, they're not planning to leave the city the total opposite we, we love the city we love living here we're here to participate in that change researchers at the university of houston in texas are working on a healthcare innovation that can potentially combat the nation's growing fentanyl crisis 
It's a vaccine that can help stop an overdose by helping the body develop antibodies against fentanyl. Researchers believe the vaccine will benefit multiple categories of people, including animals used by law enforcement agents. We'll take a look at this. The Orion spacecraft, it's on its way back to Earth at about 2,404 miles per hour. Yeah, it's rocketing through. And the spacecraft is part of NASA's historic Artemis I mission to test whether the Orion can safely carry humans. Right now it is unmanned. Now the goal is to get astronauts back on the moon's surface for the first time since 19, the 1970s. As of this morning, Orion is more than 234,000 miles from Earth. It's scheduled to splash down in the Pacific Ocean on December 11th. Oh, so cool getting all those updates about it. It's awesome. Yeah. Yep, it is exciting. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to I was going to say, I know you, you were we'll so excited when it finally launched. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And now seeing all, like, everything, mm -hmm. like we're you mentioned. these images. It's yeah. all awesome. Oh, yeah. yeah. If, you've, if you guys haven't seen the surface of the moon, some of the video that they've gotten on the Orion, it's definitely worth your time. Definitely must watch. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, one thing we got to watch is, of course, those storms out mm -hmm. there in the Pacific yeah. because it looks like we have another storm system headed yeah. our way. We have another storm system headed our way, and it's probably going to make impact here in the Treasure Valley on Sunday morning. That could bring some snowfall into the Treasure Valley as well as over in our mountains. But as for today, we are seeing very chilly temperatures all the way up north in Missoula, 27 degrees there. Here in Boise, 32 degrees to 33. 3 degrees going to be the high 26 in Idaho Falls all the way down to the Great Bay Basin even chilly there 35 in Salt Lake and 28 degrees over in Elko taking a look outside right now we are continuing to see just a few spot showers right now just some snow showers it would be very light snow for those areas and shouldn't last too long we are seeing some clouds as well throughout the morning temperatures right now 28 degrees in Boise 29 in Caldwell and 26 over in Mountain Home and then up in the mountains 12 degrees in Sun Valley and 8 degrees the temperature right now now in Stanley. So very chilly temperatures out right now. Taking a look at the seven day forecast, 33 degrees is the temperature today. That'll jump up to 38 degrees on Saturday and 39 degrees expected on Sunday. We will see some morning snow on Sunday here in the Treasure Valley. That should turn to rain as we enter the later hours of the morning. As that temperature starts to rise to 39 degrees, then we'll see a cold front move into the region, dropping temperatures down to 34 degrees on Monday, 33 on Tuesday and 31 degrees on Wednesday. And then moving over to the mountains we will see snowfall on Sunday as well with a high of 32 degrees then temperatures will drop back down throughout much of early next week 30 degrees on Monday 27 on Tuesday and Wednesday and 25 degrees on Thursday that snow on Sunday something for our friends in the mm -hmm. mountains to keep in mind and prepare for yeah over in the mountains and here in the Treasure Valley yeah. we do have a chance of seeing snow it will be sort of light around a half inch is what we're expecting right now but it could be more or less as we enter Sunday and of course, this morning, something to look out for mm -hmm. is, like Vasily mentioned, the freezing on the roads yeah. with these chilly temperatures. 100%. Thank you, Vasily. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI bring a team traffic all morning long. And as we're approaching the 6 o'clock hour, starting to see some more cars out on the roads. But as you can see, everything moving along freely. Not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down this morning. So when you hop in the car and start your day, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more teen traffic updates. Coming up on CBS2 News, the Mountain West Championships are set for tomorrow. A look ahead at the Bulldogs vs. Broncos. This is CBS2 News This Morning. 554, welcome back. College football expanding its playoff format to 12 teams. Now that would split the world famous game and tournament of Roses parade from happening on the same day. Now Nicole Comstock has more on reaction from fans. It's an iconic arena known as America's Stadium. And on New Year's Day in particular, the Rose Bowl makes Pasadena feel like the center of the world. The energy is overwhelming in the best way. <laughs> Heather Cooklin loves that for 105 years, the Rose Bowl has hosted the Rose Bowl football game on the same day as the Tournament of Roses parade. But we could see a tear in the fabric of that tradition because of a new agreement. I think it is a shame because it is pretty cool to have tradition 
for as long as we've had in the city. It appears the Rose Bowl and the Rose Parade will continue to be on the same day for the next three years based on the new and old contracts. After that, there's no guarantee. And there's even a chance after 2026, some believe that the Rose Bowl could host a college football playoff game in December, a week before New Year's Day. Tradition has been that the Rose Bowl game is, is a uh, rivalry game between the Pac-12 and the Big Ten. But Pasadena Mayor Victor Gordo says the biggest change would be who plays at the Rose Bowl game. This new agreement essentially means that the Rose Bowl game played at the Rose Bowl Stadium uh, will become a, uh, a playoff game. He says he wants to protect the tradition of pairing the game and the parade on the same day while providing more college football. Let's keep in mind that the Rose Bowl is also an economic engine for the region and for the state of California. It drives tourism. Uh, it drives $250 million to $500 million every year into the local economy. And locals we asked had different takes on how much the changes to the so-called granddaddy of them all mean to college football fans. I think in this city, yes, because I think people are used to. That's, that's why it's so difficult to get the tickets anyway. Uh, people will still have money on the game, so they'll love it regardless. It's really exciting. I'm more about like the good energy rather than like who exactly is playing. Well, tomorrow Fresno State is coming to Boise to face the Broncos in the 2022 Mountain West Football Championship game. Kickoff is set for 2 p.m. Be sure to tune in. And coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, Congress narrowly avoiding a rail strike that could have cost billions of dollars. A look at the bill now set to be signed by the president. Plus, making the holidays a little brighter for kids in need locally. How you can be a part of Idaho's largest toy drive. You're watching CBS 2 News. We have your latest headlines coming up at the top of the hour. We'll be right back. Take the news with you on the radio. 670 KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. This morning on CBS 2 News, the search for Michael Vaughn continues. Why investigators are set to start digging through another backyard as soon as this morning. Plus, some weekend winter fun here in the Treasure Valley. A look ahead at the events happening nearby. Plus, it's time for our favorite part of the week. Get ready to meet Anders, our CBS2 Pet of the Week. CBS2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. A live look for you of downtown Boise on this Friday. It's December 2nd, 2022. I'm Sarah Jacobson. I'm Ashley Carter, and I feel like I say this during every pet of the week. Lola could use a friend. I yeah, mean, they just have the cutest pets of the week, and mm -hmm. I I tell myself she could use a friend, but we'll let we'll let someone else make Anders their best friend. No, definitely. <laughs> Lots of adorable animals. But yeah, if yes. you like Anders, of course, mm -hmm. you can keep him at home or you can take him home. Yeah. He needs a big backyard though. Mm -hmm. And yeah, if you're heading out this morning, uh, maybe taking the dog out. Yeah. Yeah, it is much colder than yeah. what we experienced yeah. yesterday. Very cold temperatures this morning. Temperatures sitting in the high 20s right now, and they're going to continue to drop from to set at 7 and at 8 o'clock. Temperatures right now are around 28 degrees. They'll drop to 25 degrees at 7 and we'll stay at 25 degrees at 8 o'clock. So very chilly temperatures headed our way here in the Treasure Valley. Now, taking a look outside, we are continuing to see clouds today, and we're also seeing some snowfall, some isolated snow showers right now over in Ontario and just north of Boise over in the foothills. So we are seeing a little bit of snow this morning, but we shouldn't see very much precipitation as we head out throughout the day. And then on Saturday throughout the day, we aren't going to see very much precipitation. But late Saturday night and early Sunday morning, we are going to see see some snowfall here in the Treasure Valley. We're going to continue to see precipitation throughout the day on Sunday, but as that temperature continues to jump up, we'll see that snow turn into rain, but we will see snow for much of the morning on Sunday. Taking a look at high temperatures today here in Boise, we're going to see a high temperature of about 33 degrees, 33 degrees expected in Emmett and 34 expected in Nampa and Caldwell, 33 over in Mountain Home, 35 in Ontario and up in the mountains, 22 degrees in McCall.
Thank you, Vasily. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI bring a team traffic all morning long. And on this Friday morning, as we start the 6 o'clock hour, still looking nice and calm out there. As you can see, starting to see some more cars, but everything moving along smoothly. Not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down. So when you get in the car and start your day, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Well, police planning to continue digging for what they believe to be the remains of Michael Vaughn. Now this time they're going to be in a different backyard. They'll be looking in the one next door after not finding anything in the one they spent about a week digging up. CBS 2's Michaela Elich, she has more of what we're now learning. You can't take one of our most precious citizens from us and ever expect us to stop. Fruitland Police Chief J.D. Huff refusing to give up. Police have been searching for now six-year-old Michael Vaughn, who disappeared from his home last year in July. Search efforts continued in this backyard of a home on Red Wing Street in Fruitland. After receiving a credible tip that Michael's remains may be there. Idaho Mountain Search and Rescue, Mountain State's detection dogs deployed multiple certified human remains detection dogs on the property, all of them alerting to the presence of human remains. For over a week, dozers, dump trucks, and investigators flooded the home, but there was still no sign of the little boy. Although the remains of Michael Vaughn were not recovered, we strongly believe, based on evidence, that Michael was abducted and is deceased, and that his remains were buried and later moved from the property. Police believe these four people were involved in the abduction of Michael. Sarah Wandra and Stacy Wandra live at the home that was searched. Police also saying Brandon Shirtliff and Adrian Lucian were likely there during the time of Michael's disappearance, but they believe the two are now in different states and are still looking for them. I strongly encourage Shirtliff and Lucian to contact the Fruitland Police Department detectives as the window of time for talking and cooperation is coming to a close. Police say there are others that likely know more information and encourage everyone to come forward. When we finally reach the conclusion of this investigation, and I can assure you that we will, all of those who have knowledge of Michael's disappearance and have failed to report or hindered our investigation will be pursued. And that was Michaela Elich reporting. Now, if you do know anything about what happened to Michael Vaughn, call the Fruitland Police Department. Their number is 208-452-3110. You can stay anonymous by calling Crime Stoppers at 208-343-COPS. We have both of those numbers on our website for you as well. Well, Boise Police looking for two missing teens, and they need your help. Now, take a look at your screen. This is 17-year-old Marcus. He was last seen near Curtis and Emerald back on Wednesday around 3.30 p.m. Now, Marcus is considered endangered because he doesn't have the medications that he needs. He could be wearing a white and blue, white and blue sweatpants as well as a black hoodie. And also missing but unrelated, this is 17-year-old Jalen. She was last seen back on Sunday when she ran away from home near Five Mile and Florence Road. Officers and her family say they're following several leads and they're increasingly worried for her safety. Now, if you have any information about either of these teens, please call the Ada County Dispatch. That's 208-377-6790. Well, if you are looking for some fun holiday events this weekend, look no further. Here's a look ahead. The Boise Holiday Parade is tomorrow at 10 a.m. The route begins between 8th and Jefferson. And in Garden City, there's the Boise Christmas Show. It goes through Sunday, 11 to 7 at the fairgrounds. Tickets are 5 bucks for adults, 4 for seniors, and kids under 12 are free. Now in Meridian, Meridian's Winter Lights Parade is today, starting at 7 p.m. in downtown Meridian. There's a trolley from 5 to 9 from the Albertsons parking lot on Fairview and Meridian Roads. And in Eagle, tomorrow is the Eagle Country Christmas. It will be from 1 to 6, located at Heritage Park. Now, for more information on any of these events and many more, make sure to head to our website, IdahoNews.com. Well, hey, before we get to weather, we have to share our pet of the week. Meet Anders. He's a two-year-old Siberian Husky German Shepherd blend. <laughs> Look at that tongue. Now, Anders arrived at the shelter as a stray and is ready for a new beginning. 
He's ready to be your best friend. He's loyal, loving, super sweet and gentle, and of course, eager to learn. Now, if you want to meet Anders, you can schedule an appointment with West Valley Humane Society. There's a link to do that on IdahoNews.com. I had to roll around to the one where he was catching the ball again. It's just too, <laughs> it's too cute. It's too cute, yeah, guys. Yeah, I love that picture. Oh. My favorite is the one with the tongue out the side of his mouth. <laughs> just so cute. What a cutie. Yeah, oh. no, he's going to find a home mm -hmm. quick, yeah, I think. Yes, oh. definitely. Well, yeah. yeah. Speaking of home, guys, you may want to be staying inside of it. It's pretty <laughs> chilly this morning, but if you do have to brave the cold, make sure you're bundling on up. Yes. Yeah, temperature is very chilly this morning. We're going to see cold temperatures throughout the day today. In fact, this winter has been the coldest winter since 2000. Very chilly temperatures ahead of us and what we've seen over the past couple of days, 25 degrees at 9 a.m. That'll jump up to 29 degrees around 11 o'clock, leading to our high of 32 to 33 degrees around 3 p.m. So very chilly temperatures throughout the day today. Taking a look at the temperatures right now, 28 degrees outside. We do have a northwesterly wind of about five miles per hour right now. That's dropping that feels like temperature down to 23 degrees. So we have about a five degree wind chill out right now. Now taking a look at satellite, we're seeing those low pressure systems that were impacting us over the past couple of days starting to move east, but we have another storm front headed our way that's going to bring not only some rain here in the Treasure Valley, but it could bring some snowfall early on Sunday morning as that temperature stays in the 20s, but it should jump up to around 39 degrees on Sunday. That's when we could see that storm turn into rain, but some snowfall expected here in the valley and over in the mountains on Sunday. Taking a look at the next couple of days, we are going to see some cloud cover continue over the next couple of days. On Saturday, we'll see a little bit more cloud cover come in on Saturday afternoon, and then on Sunday, as you can see here, some snowfall headed our way. Taking a look at temperatures over the next five days, 33 degrees to high today. That'll jump up to 38 degrees on Saturday and 39 degrees expected on Sunday. Then after those storms move through, we'll have another cold front move into the region. That's going to drop temperatures to 34 on Monday and 33 on Tuesday. I'll give you a look at the extended forecast here in a few minutes. Chilly and like you mentioned, mm -hmm. the coldest winter yeah. since 2000. Yeah, coldest winter since 2000 here in Boise. Very chilly temperatures mm -hmm. we've seen over the past month or so, and now we're going to continue to see cold temperatures. It's only December, guys. We still have a couple yeah. more months to go of these cold temperatures. <laughs> so bundle up. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Vasily. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI. We bring a team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there this Friday morning, let's check in with Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center to see how it's looking this morning. Good morning, Ron. Well, good morning. Uh, did have uh, some localized snowfall in Boise area earlier, just light dusting, but enough to uh, make slick streets uh, away from 184 and 84. Things a little on the uh, dicey side, just generally in the Boise area. It's been at uh, further west, no snow and uh, bare pavements, 84, even 84 around the airport uh, doing okay. And traffic light here on a Friday, at least so far all the way around. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ron O'Brien. Thank you, Ron. And when you hop in the car and start your day, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. CBS 2's Great Idaho Food Drive is sponsored by Les Schwab, TDS Fiber, Two Men in a Truck, and News Talk KBOI. Well, the holiday season is here, folks. That's why CBS 2 is partnering with local businesses to help those struggling to afford food. Idaho, about 9% of Idahoans and our friends and neighbors are experiencing food insecurity. Take care of your rent and we're here to help with the food. But we really can't do that without the support of the community. And you can help by donating to the Great Idaho Food Drive. It runs through December 9th. Everything donated goes to the Idaho Food Bank and Hungry Idahoans. What they need is non-perishable, nutritious food items, things like canned protein, fruits and vegetables, soups, stews, whole grain pasta, rice, even cereal. You can drop off those donations at any Treasure Valley Les Schwab Tire Center at TDS Fiber or right here at the CBS2 Studios in downtown Boise. You can also donate money through a link. We have that on IdahoNews.com. Well, straight ahead on CBS2 News this morning, Congress narrowly avoiding a rail strike. It could have cost billions of dollars. A look at the bill now set to be signed by the president. Plus, a major highway in Hawaii is under threat as lava flow inches closer. The damage shutting down the road may do just before the holidays. All right, it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. It was a hard one. 7% of people say it's never acceptable to do this on an airplane. A lot of great guesses, folks, but the answer, 
asking someone to switch seats. Good to know. All right. Yeah. Now for today's question, if you're average, you spend 34 hours over the course of your life doing this. All right, folks, what do you think it is? CBS2 Adventure Weather showing your local forecast across the Gem State over in Weezer. 32 degrees and mostly sunny skies today. That'll drop to 19 degrees overnight and then tomorrow 34 degrees and partly cloudy skies expected over in Weezer. Moving to Cascade, 21 degrees and partly cloudy skies today. That'll drop to 3 degrees overnight and then tomorrow 30 degrees and mostly sunny skies expected in Cascade. Thank you, Vasily. Well, Congress has avoided what President Biden says could have been a Christmas catastrophe. The Senate voting to pass a bill to avert a looming rail strike. Now the president is set to sign it as soon as it reaches his desk. Bradley Blackburn has more from New York. The joint resolution is passed. Thursday's big Senate vote prevented a rail strike that could have cost the U.S. billions of dollars a day just before the holidays. We're going to avoid the rail strike, keep the rails running, keep things moving. President Biden asked Congress to act after four out of 12 rail unions rejected a labor deal the White House helped broker back in September. But not everyone believes Congress should have intervened. The workers voted down and Biden says, here, now go force it down their throats and use federal law. I, I, I think that's a bad deal. This is going to be a bipartisan disaster. The deal gives rail workers a 24 percent raise and some bonuses over five years. But a separate measure on perhaps the biggest sticking point for the unions failed, would have added seven days of paid sick leave. That proposal ended in a 52 to 43 vote in favor. It needed 60 votes to pass the Senate. It's unfortunate that this happened and uh, we're going to continue to fight the sick leave issue uh, outside of contract. The president has vowed to continue to fight for paid sick leave, not just for rail employees, but for all American workers. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News. According to the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, prior to this instance, Congress has intervened 18 times in railroad labor negotiations to avoid a strike since the passage of Railway Labor Act nearly 100 years ago. And railroad workers aren't the only Americans without paid sick days. More than 20 percent of U.S. workers are in the same position, according to government data. A growing number of states, counties and cities have been mandating the benefit in recent years. But the absence of a federal standard sets the U.S. apart from most industrialized nations. I think there's an ongoing conversation in this country about how to make sure that workers in this sector and in every sector uh, get the support that they need. Traditionally, the GOP has said mandatory paid leave would be too hard on businesses that cannot afford it. And the U.S. Supreme Court says it will take up the legal fight over President Biden's student loan forgiveness program, which offers up to $20,000 in relief for millions of Americans. A federal appeals court in Missouri had blocked the program after six Republican-led states filed a lawsuit accusing the White House of overstepping its authority. The high court's ruling may not come until early summer, which is also around the time the administration's latest pause on federal student loan payments is set to expire. Well, volcanic flows on Hawaii's Big Island posing a threat to one of the island's main highways. We talked about this yesterday. Now lava creeping towards Saddle Road, which connects the cities of Kona to Hilo. Now a blockage of that road, it could cause some serious problems. A lot of my family is on the Puna side and we have other family in Kona and we use this road to see each other, especially with the holidays coming up to hui together and spend time. And so, you know, we're looking at having to go uh, several hours longer around the South Way or taking the North Road. Hawaii's governor issuing an emergency proclamation allowing first responders to arrive quickly or limit access as needed. If the lava does cross the highway, then the Hawaii National Guard can help plan for alternatives and trying to set up bypass routes. Well, while the glowing lava is attracting visitors as well, officials there are asking people to be mindful of native Hawaiians. For many, Mauna Loa's eruption has a deeper cultural significance. I wanted to come and pay my respects to our Tutu Pele, um, which we lovingly call the goddess of the volcano. And this volcano flow that is going on and um, praying that the goddess will take care of what needs to be taken care of. 
Cultural practitioners want lava gawkers to not get in the way of those who are chanting, praying or gathering in ceremonies amid the eruption. Cool stuff. All right. Well, it is very chilly out there and now we're finding out it's the seventh the coldest mm -hmm. November, or pardon me, the November. Sixth. It's the sixth coldest winter we've seen in Ida, or in Boise, or in Boise, yes, in oh Boise gosh, so guys. far <laughs> since 2000. So very cold temperatures mm -hmm. here in Boise that we've already seen and now we're going to see here in Boise. Very, very chilly temperatures and we're starting with today. Temperatures around 33 degrees today, 27 over in Missoula, 8 degrees over in Glendive. So all the way from the north down into the Great Basin, 34 degrees in Salt Lake and 28 degrees over in Elko. All those areas seeing below average temperatures today. Now taking a look at radar, we are continuing to see a few spot snow showers over just east of Ontario. They are seeing a little bit of snow this morning and just on our Boise foothills right now, we are seeing a little bit of snowfall. So a little bit of snow this morning, but we should see that precipitation stop as we head throughout the day. 28 degrees in Boise right now, 27 over in Caldwell and 24 degrees in Mountain Home. And then over in the mountains, 12 degrees in Sun Valley and nine degrees over in Stanley. Taking a look at the seven day forecast, 38 degrees the high tomorrow. That'll jump up to 39 on Sunday and that's where we could see some morning snow. Due to that low temperature, of 26 degrees in the morning. So we could see that snow turn into some rain as we head throughout the day and then we'll see cloudy skies at night. Monday and Tuesday we'll see mostly cloudy skies 34 on Monday and 33 degrees on Tuesday and we'll jump all the way down to 29 degrees as some cold Arctic air moves into the region after those th those storms on Sunday and then moving over to the mountains we'll see temperatures around 21 degrees today. It'll jump to 30 degrees on Saturday and 32 degrees on Sunday. That's when we'll see some snow showers and then that precipitation should drop off as we enter early next week. 30 degrees on Monday, 27 on Tuesday and Wednesday, and 25 degrees on Thursday in the mountains. Some cold overnight lows mm -hmm. leading to some cold mornings like this yeah. morning. Cold mornings and also you got to be aware of that freezing out on the roads. We're going to continue to see some freezing throughout the morning due to these low temperatures and with that wetness yesterday we could have some ice on the ground so be aware of that as you head out on the roads. Yes, definitely important mm -hmm. to keep in mind. Thank you Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring a team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there this morning, let's send it out to Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center for an update. Yeah, things uh, moving along fine so far. It's uh, light traffic for the most part. Little increase in volume for 84, but Fridays tend to be a little bit lighter than usual, freeway wise anyway. In the Boise area, again, after a little snow moved through, streets away from the freeways, a little on the slick side, just mainly right around Boise. Nothing towards uh, Meridian for the most part, or Nampa Caldwell, or even to the north, Eagle on out towards Middleton. But uh, be aware in uh, Boise, non freeway routes. Things pretty quiet in general all the way around. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Thank you, Ron. When you get in the car, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, decking the halls may be a little more spendy this season, but what does that mean for your Christmas tree? Plus, making the holidays a little brighter for local kids in need how you can be a part of Idaho's largest toy drive. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. Well, you're likely going to be paying more for gifts, gatherings, and even Christmas trees this holiday season thanks to inflation. Many tree vendors are trying to keep those increases minimal, but they too are paying more for just about everything that keeps their operations running. Labor has gone up because of inflation. The trucking has gone up just to load the trees. The actual tree prices on our end wholesale wise has gone up. The American Christmas Tree Association says consumers should expect to pay anywhere from 5 to 20 percent more this year for their Christmas trees. Idaho's largest toy drive is sponsored by Idaho Central Credit Union, Big O Tires and Bronco Motors. Well, the holiday season is here and that's why CBS2 and News Talk KBOI were teaming up for Idaho's largest toy drive. Now, all the toys donated during the drive, they go to U.S. Marine Corps Toys for Tots. They, in turn, make sure every child in the Treasure Valley can have a present to open over the holiday season. What we're asking is for you to drop off new unwrapped toys or books 
at any of the white Toys for Tots boxes you can see across the community or at our big collection spot in Sportsman's Warehouse. It's in the parking lot on Fairview in Meridian. But don't delay. The toy drive ends Tuesday, December 6th. And still to come, the Orion spacecraft on its way back to Earth. We have the latest. And here's a look at what's coming up tonight on CBS2. Of course, join us for CBS2 News at 10 o'clock. And don't forget about our question of the day. We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS2 News, the search for Michael Vaughn continues. Why investigators are set to start digging through another yard as soon as this morning. Plus some weekend winter fun here in the Treasure Valley. A look ahead at the events happening nearby. Plus it's time for our favorite part of the week. Get ready to meet Anders, our CBS2 Pet of the Week. CBS2 News This Morning starts now. Happy Friday, everyone. Today in Boise, we're going to see a chilly start to the day, much different from yesterday. Seven degrees, or 25 degrees at 7 a.m. We'll stay at 25 degrees at 8 a.m. And I want to correct myself here. Yesterday, or uh, in November, we saw the coldest November since 2000. So not the coldest winter, but we do have some cold temperatures ahead of us here in the Treasure Valley. Now, we are seeing a little bit of snowfall this morning. We're continuing to see a light snowfall, just some light isolated snowfall over in the uh, foothills right now we are seeing a little bit of snowfall and just east or just east of Ontario we're also seeing a little bit of snowfall this morning now we aren't going to see any any real precipitation heading into Saturday Saturday night late uh, late on Saturday night and into Sunday morning is where we're going to see some possible snowfall here in the Treasure Valley and then as that morning goes on temperatures will start to rise and we'll see that snowfall turn to rain but we could see about a half inch of snowfall here in the Treasure Valley taking a look at the day planner we'll jump out of the 30s or we'll jump into the 30s around 12 o'clock 29 degrees expected at 11 o'clock leading to our high of 32 to 33 degrees today 33 in Boise 33 in Emmett and Mountain Home 34 in Caldwell and up in the mountains 22 degrees in McCall. Thank you Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring a team traffic all morning long and as we're now in the 630 hour of the morning you're starting to see some more headlights out there more people hitting the road and start their day but Everything moving along smoothly, not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down. Just as Vasily mentioned, be cautious of ice on the roadways. Give yourself some extra time to get where you're going. And when you get in the car, turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Well, police, they're planning to continue digging for what they believe to be the remains of Michael Vaughn. Now this time, they're looking at a different backyard. They'll be looking in the one next door after not finding anything in the one they spent a week digging up. Now CBS 2's Michaela Elich, she has more of what we're now learning. You can't take one of our most precious citizens from us and ever expect us to stop. Fruitland Police Chief J.D. Huff refusing to give up. Police have been searching for now six-year-old Michael Vaughn, who disappeared from his home last year in July. Search efforts continued in this backyard of a home on Red Wing Street in Fruitland after receiving a credible tip that Michael's remains may be there. Idaho Mountain Search and Rescue, Mountain State's detection dogs deployed multiple certified human remains detection dogs on the property, all of them alerting to the presence of human remains. For over a week, dozers, dump trucks and investigators flooded the home but there was still no sign of the little boy. Although the remains of Michael Vaughn were not recovered, we strongly believe, based on evidence, that Michael was abducted and is deceased, and that his remains were buried and later moved from the property. Police believe these four people were involved in the abduction of Michael. Sarah Wandra and Stacy Wandra live at the home that was searched. Police also saying Brandon Shirtliff and Adrian Lucian were likely there during the time of Michael's disappearance, but they believe the two are now in different states and are still looking for them. I strongly encourage Shirtliff and Lucian to contact the Fruitland Police Department detectives as the window of time for talking and cooperation is coming to a close. Police say there are others that likely know more information and encourage everyone to come forward. When we finally reach the conclusion of this investigation, and I can assure you that we will, 
All of those who have knowledge of Michael's disappearance and have failed to report or hindered our investigation will be pursued. That was CBS 2's Michaela Ellich reporting. Now, if you know anything about what happened to Michael, call the Fruitland Police Department. Their number is 208-452-3110. You can stay anonymous by calling Crime Stoppers at the second number on your screen. That's 208-343-COPS. We have both numbers on our website for you. Boise police looking for two missing teens, and they need your help. So take a look at your screen. This is 17-year-old Marcus. He was last seen near Curtis and Emerald last Wednesday around 3.30 p.m. Marcus, he's considered endangered because he doesn't have certain medications that he needs. He could be wearing white and blue sweatpants with a black hoodie. And also missing, but unrelated, is 13-year-old Jalen. She was last seen Sunday when she ran away from home near Five Mile and Florence Road. Officers and her family, they followed several leads and are increasingly worried for her safety. If you have any information about either of these teens, please call the Ada County Dispatch. That's 208-377-6790. Well, if you're looking for some fun holiday events this weekend, look no further. We have a look ahead. The Boise Holiday Parade is tomorrow at 10 a.m. The route begins between 8th and Jefferson. And in Garden City, there's the Boise Christmas Show. It goes through Sunday from 11 to 7 at the fairgrounds. Tickets, $5 for adults, 4 for seniors, and kids under 12 are free. Meridian's Winter Lights Parade is today. It starts at 7 p.m. in downtown Meridian, and there's a trolley from 5 to 9 from the Albertsons parking lot. That's on Fairview and Meridian Roads. And an Eagle tomorrow, the Eagle Country Christmas. It's from 1 to 6, located at Heritage Park. Now for more information on these events and many more, make sure to head to our website, IdahoNews.com. Well, before we get to weather, we have to share our pet of the week. Meet Anders. He's just a two-year-old. He's a Siberian Husky German Shepherd blend. Now, Anders arrived at the shelter as a stray, and he's ready to make a new beginning. He's loyal, loving, super sweet, and gentle, and of course, eager to learn. If you want to meet Anders, you can schedule an appointment with West Valley Humane Society. We do have a link to do that on IdahoNews.com. <laughs> Yeah, that picture just makes me smile. I just looked down, yeah. <laughs> yep. What a cutie. I love it. Yeah, it looks like a ton of energy and a ton of oh, fun. Yes. Definitely need to find Anders at home. Yeah, yes. no. He probably yeah. loves um, some of the snow that's mm -hmm. falling up in our mountains, yeah. and wow, a lot of it at that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we actually might see some snowfall on Sunday here in the Treasure Valley, but he, today we are just seeing colder temperatures, not, any not very much precipitation here, just some light isolated snow showers throughout the morning, but that should stop around 8 o'clock today. But take a look at temperatures 25 degrees at 9 a.m. That'll jump up to 29 around 11 and we'll break 30 around noon leading to our high today around 32 to 33 degrees 31 degrees expected around 1 o'clock. Now 28 degrees is the temperature out right now. We do have a northwesterly wind of about 5 miles per hour with that wind chill of about 5 degrees dropping that feels like temperature down to 23 degrees out this morning. Now that low pressure system that was impacting our region is moving east and we're not seeing too much of that right now but we do have another storm headed our way that will arrive on Sunday. Now that's going to bring some snowfall in the morning on Sunday and that could turn into rain as temperatures start to jump up to the high of 39 degrees on Sunday. But taking a look at the next couple of days, we are just going to see clouds here in the Treasure Valley. We're going to continue to see cloud cover on Friday. It may clear up Saturday morning, but then Saturday afternoon we'll see more clouds move in and as you can see here, some snowfall headed our way on Sunday. Taking a look at the forecast highs over the next five days, 33 degrees on Friday. That'll jump up to 38 degrees on Saturday, jumping all the way up to 39 degrees on Sunday. But after that storm moves through, we will have another cold front move through as well. That's going to drop temperatures to 34 degrees on Monday and 33 degrees on Tuesday. I'll give you a look at the extended forecast here in just a few minutes. Some chilly temperatures ahead and mm -hmm. a chilly morning to start us off. Yeah, chilly morning to start yeah. us off here. We're going to continue to see temperatures around this over the coming days, especially early next week. We'll see temperatures drop even lower in the morning. So some cold days ahead of us here in the Treasure Valley. Oh, prepare yourselves now. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there this morning, let's check in with Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center. 
Well, good morning. Nothing big going, but uh, volume a little on the increase. There's been some of the uh, crowded traffic now and then at merge areas in Meridian. Pretty typical. Uh, injury crash being cleared up last check in Nampa at 12th Avenue and Iowa Avenue, south part of Nampa. A little local hold up there. Uh, for the most part, good shape all the way around as far as driving conditions, but not in downtown Boise or the general Boise area. A little light snow moved through earlier, so a dusting of snow. A little bit on the slick side for non-freeway routes and Boise. Just use a little bit of caution. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Thank you, Ron. And when you get in the car and start your Friday morning, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for even more team traffic updates. All right, folks, it's time for our question of the day. Now, if you're average, you spend 34 hours over the course of your life doing this. All right, what are we thinking? Well, so I did a little bit of math, and if you only brush your teeth for 34 hours in your life, you don't have great dental health. So okay, I'm going to switch my guess <laughs> here, you. and I'm going to keep it to a uh, Christmas theme. I'm going to say wrapping presents is Ooh. my guess. What do you guys oh, think? Oh, that's a good one. Okay, mm -hmm. um, I'll keep with the Christmas theme, too. Um, not putting up all your decorations, but maybe just putting up your lights, Ooh, your outside lights. Okay. Oh, that takes me some time. Yeah, putting up your one. lights, okay. Okay, well, now I... I'm feeling the pressure to go with a the Christmas theme. I don't want to be left <laughs> out here. So maybe picking out a Christmas tree. Oh, that's a great Ooh. one. I like that one. All right, Linda says blowing your nose. Ooh, oh, that's a great guess. Just I like a short that one. Thing. Yeah. Audra, looking for your keys. I spent a lot of time. I doing was going to say so. I might do more than 34 <laughs> hours doing that. All right, Douglas says yawning. Oh, oh that's great a great guess. These short-term things. Yeah. Now yeah. I'm thinking I'll about it. Why? Time. All right, thank you, Douglas. Now I'm yawning. <laughs> All right. Well, if you think you know the answer, of course, you have 15 minutes to get those guesses in. You can do that by heading to our Facebook page or our Twitter. Of course, we will reveal the answer right before CBS This Morning. All right, still to come, a parent of a, ten, a parent, a warning for parents after a 10-month-old overdoses at a popular park in California. The change one father says he wants to see. CBS2 Adventure Weather showing your local forecast across the Gem State over at Payette. 34 degrees and mostly sunny skies today. That'll drop to 20 degrees overnight and then tomorrow 35 degrees and partly cloudy skies expected over in Payette. Moving to McCall, 21 degrees in McCall with mostly sunny skies today. That'll drop to 6 degrees overnight and then tomorrow 30 degrees and partly cloudy skies expected in McCall. Some chilly overnight lows. Thank you, Vasily. Well, in California, a 10-month-old boy ingesting fentanyl at a popular park in San Francisco. Now the father's warning other parents and thanking first responders for their quick response. Luz Pena has the story. It's the frightening phone call Ivan Markovic is still playing in his mind. His 10-month-old son was turning blue and struggling to breathe. Minutes earlier, he was playing in the grass with his twin brother at Moscone Park in San Francisco. When I first arrived, he was actually laying motionless on the ground in the park. So he was on the grass, on his back, um, you know, they were uh, pumping air. San Francisco firefighters and paramedics arrived on scene within two minutes of the nanny calling 911. Ivan felt helpless, hoping his son would survive. You thought you were going to lose him? Yeah, of course. I, I mean, uh, I, I think it was only once uh, they put him in the emergency vehicle and transferred him that you felt like, oh, okay, there's a possibility for treatment. But until that point when he's lying there motionless, you're, you're, you you don't know what to do. And you don't know if that's it. Medical records the family provided to ABC7 News points to an accidental fentanyl overdose, a diagnosis that never crossed their mind. They told me, you know, after the fact that they had used Narcan, how does a 10-month-old get into opioids at a playground and a park. Right around that bench is where the incident happened. It's still unclear how Senna ingested fentanyl, but now his family is speaking to alert other parents to be on high alert of any foil or powder in the grass. We contacted the mayor's office and she was unavailable for an interview. Supervisor Matt Dorsey called this incident another wake-up call for the city. How do we avoid this from happening again? 
I think I think it has to start with criminal justice, and I think we have to go after the drug dealers. We have to incentivize people who are active in their addictions to get out of their addictions. Baby Senna was discharged after six hours in the hospital. Today, the family is thanking first responders for saving his life. And no, they're not planning to leave the city. The total opposite. We, we love the city. We love living here. We're here to participate in that change. Well, researchers at the University of Houston in Texas are working on a healthcare innovation that could potentially combat the nation's growing fentanyl crisis. It's a vaccine that can help stop an overdose by helping the body develop antibodies against fentanyl. Researchers believe the vaccine will benefit multiple categories of people, including animals used by law enforcement agents. Well, the Orion spacecraft, it's on its way back to Earth at about 2,404 miles per hour. It's rocketing. The spacecraft, it's part of NASA's historic Artemis I mission, testing whether the Orion can safely carry humans. Their goal is to get astronauts back to the moon's surface for the first time since the 1970s. Now, as of this morning, Orion is about 234,000 miles from Earth. It's scheduled to splash down in the Pacific Ocean on December 11th. Oh, how cool. Very exciting. So amazing. Yeah, they have some yeah. great um, mm -hmm. images. We talked about that yeah. earlier, yeah. but if you have the time, it's definitely, definitely worth check that out. Yeah, yeah. seeing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, back here on Earth, temperatures <laughs> very cold, especially here in Boise, but across much of the western United States, we're seeing chilly temperatures, especially the more north you go, 27 degrees in Missoula, 8 degrees over in Glendive, and then as you come back down to the Boise area, 33 in Boise, 26 over in Idaho Falls, and then further down in the Great Basin, 28 degrees in Elko, 40 degrees in Reno, and 34 degrees in Salt Lake. All those temperatures below average as we're seeing a cold front impacting many of those areas. Right now in the Treasure Valley, we're seeing a little bit of snowfall, just a few spot showers down near Homedale. We are seeing a little bit of snow this morning and on our foothills here in Boise. Now taking a look at temperatures right now, 28 degrees in Boise, 24 in Mountain Home and 27 degrees in Caldwell. And then over in the mountains, 12 degrees in Sun Valley and 9 degrees in Stanley this morning. Chilly temperatures all around southern Idaho. Taking a look at the extended forecast, 38 degrees expected tomorrow. That'll jump up to 39 degrees on Sunday. And that's that's where we could see some morning snow as that low temperature is around 26 degrees. But as the day goes on, we will see that snow turn into rain. And then we'll see a cold front move in that's going to drop temperatures early next week. 34 degrees on Monday, 33 on Tuesday, 31 on Wednesday, and 29 degrees will be the high on Thursday. Then move it over to the mountains, 30 degrees expected tomorrow. That'll jump to 32 degrees on Sunday. We'll see snow showers on Sunday in that cold front will start to drop temperatures in the mountains as well. 30 degrees on, on Monday, 27 on Tuesday, and Wednesday and 25 degrees expected on Thursday. That snow is something to keep an eye out for mm -hmm. for both our friends in Boise and in the mountains. Yeah, here in Boise, we could yeah. see just about a half inch of snowfall on that Sunday morning. So a little bit more snowfall than what we've seen over the past couple of days. And then the mountains, they can expect some more snowfall there as well on Sunday. So prepare for that. And mm -hmm. if you're heading out on Sunday, just drive careful. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Vasily. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI, we bring a team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there, let's send it out to Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center to see what it's looking like. It's been pretty quiet. In general, there was an earlier injury crash in Nampa, 12th Avenue in Iowa. It appears that uh, still being worked on. No big delays. The traffic's pretty light. And there could be some slick spots around the Treasure Valley. Very hit and miss, mainly in towards Boise after some uh, snow moved through just right around the Boise area or the Foothills area. Earlier, I've noticed some streets that uh, look to be a little bit on the slick side, a little light dusting of snow, but not affecting freeways. Any merge slowing, ID4 and Meridian minimal. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ron O'Brien. Thank you, Ron. And when you get in the car and start your Friday morning, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for even more team traffic updates. Coming up on CBS2 News, the Mountain West Championships are set for tomorrow. A look ahead at Bulldogs vs. Broncos. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. It's 6.53. Welcome back. College football expanding its playoff format to 12 teams. 
That's tripling in size from the current setup and a drastic change from the controversial BCS system. Now, starting with the 2024 season, the sixth highest ranked conference champions will receive automatic bids and the next six highest ranked teams will also get in. Well, the major change comes as the CFP made a new deal with the city of Pasadena that would split up the world famous game and tournament of roses parade from happening on the same day. Now that time honored tradition dates back a whole hundred years. Nicole Comstock has more on reactions from fans. It's an iconic arena known as America Stadium and on New Year's Day in particular, the Rose Bowl makes Pasadena feel like the center of the world. The energy is overwhelming in the best way. <laughs> Heather Cooklin loves that for 105 years, the Rose Bowl has hosted the Rose Bowl football game on the same day as the Tournament of Roses parade. But we could see a tear in the fabric of that tradition because of a new agreement. I think it is a shame because it is pretty cool to have tradition for as long as we've had in the city. It appears the Rose Bowl and the Rose Parade will continue to be on the same day for the next three years based on the new and old contracts. After that, there's no guarantee. And there's even a chance after 2026, some believe that the Rose Bowl could host a college football playoff game in December, a week before New Year's Day. Tradition has been that the Rose Bowl game is, is a uh, rivalry game between the PAC 12 at the Big Ten. But Pasadena Mayor Victor Gordo says the biggest change would be who plays at the Rose Bowl game. This new agreement essentially means that the Rose Bowl game played at the Rose Bowl Stadium uh, will become a uh, a playoff game. He says he wants to protect the tradition of pairing the game and the parade on the same day while providing more college football. Let's keep in mind that the Rose Bowl is also an economic engine for the region and for the state of California. It drives tourism. Uh, it drives $250 million to $500 million every year into the local economy. And locals we asked had different takes on how much the changes to the so-called granddaddy of them all mean to college football fans. I think in this city, yes, because I think people are used to. That's that's why it's so difficult to get the tickets anyway. Uh, people will still have money on the game, so they'll love it regardless. It's really exciting. I'm more about like the good energy rather than like who exactly is playing. Well, tomorrow, Fresno State is coming to Boise to face the Broncos in the 2022 Mountain West Championship football game. Kickoff set for 2 p.m. The Broncos and Bulldogs have met on three previous occasions in the Mountain West Football Championship game, with Boise State having a 2-1 advantage. All right, we'll see if your team will get there. I Ashley. am a Bulldog, so we'll have to see. <laughs> I love it. All right, guys, it's time for our question of the day. Go Broncos. If you're average, <laughs> you spend 34 hours over the course of your life doing this. What is it? That answer, untangling holiday lights. Oh, so oh. not putting them up, tang taking them down. <laughs> well, 34 hours. All right, guys, we'll see you back here at 11. Have a great day. Take the news with you on the radio. News Talk KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. CBS Mornings is coming up next. And watch for your next local newscast on CBS 2 today at 11. Connect with CBS 2 for local news and weather on IdahoNews.com.